Hello, welcome back to my second video on IELTS presentation. And as promised from my first video, this time I will talk about how to accomplish IELTS writing task one. Okay, so let's start without so much ado. All right, so again, how to accomplish IELTS writing task one. And I will focus on interpreting pie charts. Notice these photos. For sure you have seen them already. What is a pie chart? A pie chart is also called as circle chart. It is a type of graph in which a circle is divided into sectors that each represents a proportion of the whole. So there is a circle thing and then it is divided into parts called sectors Then each of these parts represents a proportion of the whole. A circular statistical graphic, which is divided into slices to illustrate numerical proportion. So basically, a pie chart is a mathematical object, okay? And then it illustrates numerical proportion. So what are the keywords? Segment, portion, part of a whole, percentage, data, source. All these keywords you would come across as you study pie charts. So I'm showing you now an example of a pie chart. So this whole thing is called whole. Simply, just refer to this as whole. Next, each of these parts, the red part, yellow part, green part, the blue part, is called the part of the whole, or slice, cut, or segment. Okay, so we call these um, cut, segment, slice, or part of the whole. The numbers, you see 3 hours, 6 hours, 9 hours, 12.5%, 37.5%, 25%, 25 the school, play, sleep, homework, these are called your data. And then when you see a group of words below it or under it, like example, students' time management, John Hopkins Medical School 2018, that is called your source or where the information is from. Okay, so without um, so much ado. Let me give you now how to write because I told you this is a detailed presentation. What to write, how to write your task one. Okay, and for that, your task one output or written output should have four major parts. And please, no part here should be missing for you to hit the nine mark or the eight band score. All right, at least the eight if you do this. First part, introduction. And it should be only one sentence. Number two, overview. Two to three sentences. Please limit your overview to two to three sentences. Number three, feature one. One to two paragraphs, but I encourage you only one paragraph. And number four, feature two, one to two paragraphs. But again, I encourage you one paragraph only. Why do I encourage you to limit to only one sentence, two to three sentences, one to two, or one paragraphs in that sense, because put in mind that in task one, you're only given to 150 to 180 words, okay? So please do not go beyond it or do not go under it. Otherwise, you will get a bad score or a bad mark in the IELTS test. So let's start with the introduction. How to write your introduction? Let's say, this pie chart appears on your IELTS test. So study what are the words around it, like here, average household expenditures by major category 2010, Japan, Malaysia, study the numbers, and then your, the part, the segments here, their labels are not inside your pie chart. They are written outside, but color coded. We call this the legend. So eyes on the pie chart and eyes on the legend as well. The light green part is housing, the light blue part is transport, the yellow part is food, the dark green part is healthcare, and the dark blue part is other goods and services. So how do we write our introduction? So this is an example. The pie chart shows the average expenditures of the household in Japan and Malaysia in the year 2010. You see? Put all the keywords, important words from your pie chart. Right away, in the first three words, you write the pie chart, or maybe the circle chart. Shows 
Give an active form of verb. Please do not use is or are or was or were. Never. Active voice of verb. The pie chart shows the average expenditure. Where did we get this? Please do not copy this entire phrase like use right there. This pie chart shows the average household expenditure. No, no, no. So how did I rephrase it? The average expenditures of the household in Japan and Malaysia in the year 2010. So put the keywords together in one sentence only. That is your introduction. Okay, so let's continue with overview. How do we write your overview? Do not write too many numbers, percentages, and dates. No numbers yet, no dates yet, no percentages yet. Find the greatest and smallest from each pie chart or find the data that became bigger or smaller. Study the numbers. Look at the data, like the blue one, 29, the blue one here, 26. Compare the green one, light green one here, 21, light green one here, 34. Compare, okay? So let me show you how I wrote the overview here. Uh, so what, uh, if you have to notice, what happened to the numbers here? The biggest here, because I mentioned, right, you have to look at the biggest number and the smallest number. In Japan, the biggest number is 29%. In Malaysia, the biggest number is 34%. These greatest numbers or segment means that they contributed the most to the expenditures, okay, in the country. And then the smallest number, 6% for Japan and 3% for Malaysia, it means that they have contributed the least to the expenditure, okay? So how do we write our paragraph for overview? Like you say, in contrast, remember, you're looking at comparing the two pie charts, but looking at the differences. That's why we say contrast, okay? If you're looking at the two charts or pie charts, but you're finding or trying to understand the similarities, you say comparison. Again, if they are similar, you say comparison. If they are not the same, say in contrast. So that's why I wrote here, in contrast. Goods and services contributes, okay? Active voice of verb contributes the greatest expenditures in Japan, okay? While Malaysia spends the most on housing. Look at this, the blue one, other goods and services. That's why it says here, goods and services. The blue one, 29%, don't mention the number, contributes the greatest expenditures in Japan. While, let's go to Malaysia. This uh, Malaysia spends most on housing. Look at this, 34% in housing. So, then nonetheless, both countries have the least expenditure on healthcare this time. Japan's least number is 6%. Malaysia's least number is 3%. The same, right? So that's why I said here, nonetheless. Notice the word in contrast and nonetheless. I told you, in contrast, because they don't have the same value. In Japan, the greatest percentage is um, on other goods and services, while in Malaysia, it's uh, housing. But in their least values, they got the same. It's from uh, health care. That's why it says nonetheless, okay? And then uh, both countries have least expenditures. Least means smallest. So I use synonyms because here I've already said greatest. So in the next sentence, I said spends the most, same meaning. Okay, but you did not repeat the words because in IELTS writing, if you keep repeating words, like you, you said, contributes the greatest, then you say Malaysia, Malaysia's greatest expenditure, you are repeating words, you might get or surely get low score in the IELTS writing. Okay, then here I said the least expenditures. Okay, so this is now a good example on how to write the overview part. Again, notice the number, look up the greatest and the smallest. Okay, then compare them, then write the paragraph. All right, so let's continue with feature one. So for features one and two, write specific numbers. Okay, so this is now the time for you to write the numbers and the percentages and the values of the data. Okay, in overview, no numbers, 
just compare them. In number two, or in the feature part, you here you write the numbers, okay? What else? So let's look at the numbers. Uh, three and six, 20 and 10. Why did I choose this? Because the numbers double. You have to observe how the numbers behave, okay? Look at this. Um, the health care in Malaysia is 3%, while the health care in Japan is 6%. What happened? It was doubled for times two, right? 10% in Malaysia for transport is in Japan 20% for transport. So it has doubled, okay? And then here, 24% for food in Japan, 27% in Malaysia for food. So what happened? It is up by 3%. Um, here, other goods and services in Japan is 29%, then other goods and services in Malaysia is 26%. What happened? Down by 3%. Okay, so write specific details in large paragraphs to make your writing coherent. That deserves a high mark because you know in uh, task one, you should be coherent. Look at this, coherent, meaning Find a way that you could tell all these numbers in a logical way. Let's read this. There are many ways to organize your ideas. The important thing is that your organization is logical. Be reasonable. Then look at this. 21% and 34%. If you notice, only this part, the housing part, reaches beyond a 10% difference. Okay. So to me, this is how I interpreted this pie chart. I looked at the numbers that doubled, 3 to 6, 10 to 20. Then I looked at the numbers that went up or went down by 3%. From 24, goes up to 27. From 29, goes down to 26. So this is now my interpretation. Put those observations into writing. Okay? So I say, the expenses in Malaysia on health care and transport. All right? had accounted for 3%. So I started with 3% and 10% in Malaysia. Okay, so 3% is for healthcare. That's why it says here healthcare. And then 10% is for transport. Okay, respectively doubled in Japan too. So this 3% and 10% doubled in Japan too, from 3 to 6% and from 10 to 20% of the same. Of the same means of the same sector, like 3% to 6% of healthcare, 10% to 20% of uh, transport. So you see, from your observation on the numbers, we now put them into writing, interpret them using words this time. You have to be creative in writing task one. Then I write here, in addition, because you have an additional observation. Housing in Malaysia, let's go to housing. So it's letter, uh, this one, the green, light green shape. Housing in Malaysia comprising, I mean here, 34% of the country's total expenditure is slightly more than one tenth in Japan, which takes 21% of the whole. Where did I get this slightly more than one tenth? Remember, okay, 34%, 21%. If you subtract them, 34 minus 21, you get 13%. 13% difference. And 13% is a little bit higher than one tenth. Okay, that's why I, says, I say here one tenth. The total, uh, Malaysia's 34%, I mean, in Malaysia, a uh, housing in Malaysia comprising 34%, of the country's total expenditure is slightly more than one tenth in Japan, which takes 21% of the whole. Okay, so it's like 34 minus 21 is 13%, and that's what you interpreted here. You wrote here the expenditure on housing in Malaysia and the expenditure of housing in Japan. Then the difference is slightly more than one tenth, to be exact, 13%. So this is how represented I represented the numbers in feature one. So if you notice, we did not write yet the 
the blue part or the up and down by 3% from 29 to 26, and then from 24 to 27. This is another behavior or common behavior of the numbers, right? Because I will write that in feature two. So you divide, okay? So me, I decided that the doubled number and the more than 10, one tenth difference I put in feature one. And then this going up and down by 3% in feature two. So this is now my feature one. Okay, so let's continue with feature two this time. Generally, because this is now my last paragraph, generally there is 3% difference between the two countries in terms of food and other goods and services. Look at this, food part, okay? 3% um, 3 difference from 27% in Malaysia, it's 24% in Japan, 27 minus 24, that's lower 3%, right? 29% in Japan, then 26% in Malaysia, that's 3% lower, okay, from Japan to Malaysia. So you see, I put the up and down by 3% in one feature, feature two. That's why I say, I say here, generally there is 3% difference between the two countries. There should be R here, sorry for this, in terms of food and other goods and services. Then you continue. Malaysia spends more. So interpret what is this 3% difference about? Then write the percentage on your paragraph. Malaysia spends more on food at 27% than in Japan at 24%. However, okay, so in, in the, on the food sector, I mean, or on the food segment, Malaysia is higher, Japan is lower by 3%. However, I use however because the idea now is different, right? However, the latter, look at this. So this is now Malaysia is higher by 3% and then Malaysia is lower by 3% in the other goods and services. However, the latter, what is this latter? Latter refers to, because I mentioned Malaysia first in Japan. Latter means the last that you mentioned. The latter or Japan has greater expenses on other goods and services. Look at this, dark blue, other, go other goods and services. The latter or Japan has greater expenses on other goods and services, taking almost three tenths of the overall. Where did I get the three tenths? Look at this, it's 29%, very close to 30%. And you know that in fraction form, 30% is three tenths. That's why it says here, um, taking almost three tenths or 30%, okay, three tenths of the overall, while the former, former means Malaysia. Again, I used latter and former here so that I will um, avoid using Malaysia and Japan again. Because again, in writing task one, as much as possible, don't keep repeating the same words, okay? Find ways so you can be creative. So me, instead of saying Malaysia and Japan again and again, I used the latter, Japan, the last I mentioned, okay, has greater expenses. And then the over, while the former, that means Malaysia, the former takes 26% portion of the expenditures, okay? So here, 29% from Japan and 26% from Malaysia. I hope you were able to follow. So this is how I wrote feature two, okay? Um, from Japan, it rose to 27% by 3%. Then from Malaysia, it rose to 3% in Japan to 29%. So see, this is how I wrote the feature too. So if you put together all your written outputs, okay? So you can have your final written output in task one. Let's read through. The pie chart shows the average expenditures of the household in Japan and Malaysia in 2010. Remember, what do we call this part? Introduction. Next, in contrast, goods and services contributes the greatest expenditures in Japan, while Malaysia spends the most on housing. Similarly, both countries have the least expenditures on health care. What do we call this part? Overview. Next, the expenses in Malaysia on healthcare and transport that accounted for 3% and 10% respectively doubled in Japan to 
6% and 20% of the same. In addition, housing in Malaysia comprising 34% of the total uh, of the country's total expenditure is slightly more than one tenth in Japan, which takes 21% of the whole. So this is now feature one. And lastly, generally, there is 3% difference between the two countries with R, okay? In terms of food and other goods and services, Malaysia spends more on food at 27% than in Japan at 24%. However, the latter, that means Japan, has greater expenses on other goods and services, taking almost three tenths of the overall, while the former, that's Malaysia, takes 26% of the total expenditures. So this is now, so this is now your final written output. And if you copy that and paste to Microsoft Word so that you will find or see the number word count, it says 151. Even if you type this in your Microsoft um, Word, uh, yeah, word sheet, you will find 151 word count. I did this. I did this actually. All right. So I hope I was able to help you. And that these are my sources. You can check out these links. These are already the shortened URLs, okay, for your further studies. And thank you. Again, let me remind you, take your skills to the next level. If you think IELTS writing is really difficult, is really hard, take your skills to the next level. If you think you did not understand my video presentation, take your skills to the next level. Watch this video again, or better yet, send me a message. Then I will reply to you. I will explain to you better. I am not a perfect teacher, but I am taking my skills to the next level. I hope I have inspired you. Keep writing, okay? And watch out for my next um, lesson video on writing. It will be in the task two, or might as well. I will teach you how to interpret bar graphs. Okay, it just depends. So I hope um, you learned something again. And then if you do like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Teacher Alfred. That's all for today. And see you next time. Bye-bye.